Hello, thanks for joining us this week. Can our prisons cope with seriously disturbed inmates? And where's the great growth debate? What's it going to take to get sustainable growth in the New Zealand economy? Well, the government started rolling out its progress reports on the business growth agenda three out last month, dealing with exports, innovation and infrastructure. Four more coming this month on capital markets, natural resources and workplace skills and safety. But so far, they haven't exactly set the Thames on fire with fresh thinking, as the Labour opposition was quick to point out. So is Labour doing any better? Well, Selwyn Manning's been following that up with Labour's economic development spokesperson, David Cunliffe. Uh, David Cunliffe, welcome to the programme. Thank you, Selwyn. Good to be here. In August, uh, you travelled um, back from North Europe, where you visited the Scandinavian countries, and um, you've commented that you're very impressed with some of the policies there. Mm -hmm. In particular, you said the Scandinavian countries are fantastic about government, business, and community partnerships. Mm -hmm. um, how would you translate what you saw up in Scandinavia into a New Zealand context as far as policy is concerned? Well, thanks very much. Well, look, the first thing is they know as small countries in a really global world, for them, the European Union market, that they have to specialise to do well. So the first obvious answer for us is bring our government and business together to really work out some of the future opportunities for us in terms of specialisations. Maybe it's agricultural technology or biotech. Maybe it's uh, new opportunities in high-value manufacturing but let's align our research units, our CRIs, some of our tertiary education facilities around those industry sectors and really pull together as a team. That's one of the lessons from Scandinavia. Is that go global, go deep. Global and go deep. Is that kind of like a, a modern version or a Scandinavian version of the infrastructure PPPs except in a social uh, policy, economic policy? Not necessarily, no. I mean, this is PPPs are a different question if yeah. you're talking about the private sector and the government taking an ownership stake in a project um, and happy to have that discussion but I'm using the word partnership in a broader sense mm. which is people sitting around the table working out what our advantages are as New Zealand Inc and playing as a team to win on the global stage that means the government can't abdicate a, a co-leadership role mm. it means that it has a, a very important role to bring the other t players to the table uh, and to help chart a course for the future. In Scandinavia, they don't argue about whether the government should have targets for growth in different sectors or regions or uh, tracking measures to make sure they're getting there. That's got bipartisan support. But it's don't we have that now, though? Not really. No, no, no. But, but in New Zealand, we've had Where this. does it break down then? Well, in New Zealand, there's been uh, actually cross couple of different governments, starting with, uh, starting with the Labour government in the late 80s, the, the rise of the dogma of extreme laissez-faire. Mm. You know, just leave the market to its own devices mm. and it will deliver. Hands off. And hands the, off and mm. hope. Well, it's kind mm. of like riding a bike with no hands. Mm. You know, at the very least, you might just go around in circles and you might fall off completely and, and that isn't good either. So you're advocating um, an, inter an interventionist type of a policy approach here? Look, I think this is a place on the spectrum that we need to talk about that we haven't been, at least not for a long time. I'm not talking about highly interventionist, top-down nanny state, mm. but nor am I talking about bottom up but government can do nothing. I is think this a third way yeah, or a well, fourth way? I, I think thought it's a third different way might be dead. <laughs> yeah, well if you yeah. want to use the old Blair language yeah. I'm talking about a different thing again. Mm. I'm talking about a method for government which is uh, partnering mm. where government is listening to the community, listening to business mm. but willing to be very active in making stuff happen based on those discussions. So if you like bottom up but highly active mm. I think we've got things we can learn from the key government mm. about how to work with communities and listen. Uh, we've got things that we don't want to do that we did in the Clark uh, Cullen years where we were perceived to be too top down but mm. this government, this key government seems to be stuck in neutral or barely in first gear. Uh, there are no new ideas coming from them. There is no sense of strategy for New Zealand other than milk more cows, dig a bit of coal, but even that's falling over well, because course, solid energy is closing mines down all over the place. But We've got to do better than of that. Of course, the key lead government has been rolling out its strategic economic development plans in the last few weeks. Yeah, I exactly mean, it, what were they? I mean, the export plan had this big, bold target with which we agree 
move exports as a share of GDP from 30% to 40%. Sounds great. How are they going to get there? Turn through the little brochure. 47 out of 55 actions are stuff they're already doing. And of the uh, eight new ones or seven new ones, five of them were PR flim flam. So what would you do? So there is no plan there. Well, I think we have to get several things right. I mean, the first thing is we need to break the economy down into sector plans and regional plans to build from the bottom up. Secondly, we've got to have uh, a rebirth of high value manufacturing because what we know from international best practices, you can't sell high value services, you can't have a whole lot of high value IP unless you've got a manufacturing component. So manufacturing is dying in New Zealand. Are you seeing that as b in the regional development areas or are you looking at urban development in some sort of manufacturing industry kind both, of thing coming? Both. Through? I think we've got to have a, a, a lattice, if you like, mm. of uh, plans for industry sectors, some of which will be urban targeting high growth, high value opportunities. It might be processing of our primary product in yep. the areas where we haven't previously. So it's value been added to Value the, added, yeah. mm. pr but we've got to take a global view of what they call value chains, mm. Mm. which is the chain of commerce from the producer to the customer. We've got to work out industry by industry where and in there we can grow the most value and keep the most value okay. and defend it. You, you've been looking at these things obviously for a wee while now, particularly yep. since you've gone into opposition. Yep. What stands out as an opportunity there as far as the specifics, as far as New Zealand putting value-added export uh, brands out there? Yeah, well, I think a, a high-value manufacturing strategy is the great gap. Mm. And moment. what kind of manufacturing product or value-added product could you see as standing out that needs to be pushed by New Zealand? Well, I just said let's listen to business because mm. they know their customers best. Not for me as a, as a public servant to dictate to business what they should be doing. I mean, I've got a few ideas I could bring to the table. But being in but opposition for these years, yeah, you've had the opportunity to, to listen. talk to lots of so businesses. So what is coming through? So uh, for us, some obvious opportunities are in the area of clean technologies and renewable energies, whether it's selling our expertise in geothermal power overseas, uh, as Mighty River is currently doing. Don't particularly want to see them privatised because they're making some good money. It might be the development of advanced protein products out of milk powder uh, or milk products. Those are two examples. But Fonterra it, it already does be, that, doesn't it? Or is it manufactured too much offshore? No, what it's doing is exporting a lot of its product as bulk. Mm. Bulk, undifferentiated commodities which go on cyclical uh, price cycles uh, and uh, probably don't make as much value out of a bucket of milk as we could do. So what we need to see is more research and development, more innovation, more bringing together of our Crown Research Institutes, mm. the best of our universities, our industry partners, with the government helping to set the framework about how we create more high value products and services. If you were looking at interventionist type of economics here, mm -hmm. um, a moderate approach is what I'm mm -hmm. kind of picking up from you. Um, would it be similar to what we saw Jim Anderton actually re being responsible for as a minister in the early part of the 2000s with regional development and actually developing that into a modern day area? Is that what you're talking about? I think we need a modern take on regional development. I think Jim did some really good mm. work, but I want to go beyond that. I don't just want us to take a, an isolated case-by-case -case approach of saying, oh, that's a good project, that's a good project. Let's have more of a strategic framework. We're, Let's bring together local and regional government with a more powered up set of economic development agencies. Let's have a clearer devolution of resources from the likes of a Ministry of Economic Development or using mm. New Zealand Trade and Enterprise. Let's scale so putting up. subsidies back into No, I didn't system. say I didn't um, say subsidies. No, that's not necessarily mm. the policy tool that you would use. What would you use there to stimulate burgeoning exporters in that area then? Well it might be that you well, you, you want to diagnose what's your problem. Mm. and you have your medicine designed to fit the problem. So if it's a lack of scale to uh, get R&D going, you might bring together an industry cluster. Mm. If it's high setup costs, you might put in place some incentives. Is this costly to government peers? Well, there might be some expense, but mm. you'd have to take a pretty hard-eyed return on investment view, and mm. you'd be looking at the whole national interest. Mm. Um, sometimes you have to invest money to make money. And would that be an expectation that you get a return over one term, one political term? I'm not going to try and set the fine print detail okay. of a policy on air now. Um, I think for some industries you would expect a longer, more gradual payback than that. Mm. Um, when you returned um, in August from overseas, sure. one of the things you said was unregulated free market capitalism has failed the world. Mm. What kind of economic system would suit New Zealand? If you were going to define what you're talking about, obviously you've given some thought to it. Mm -hmm. How would you brand this? 
So let's talk about what the failures have been. Our financial markets have mispriced risk. We've had huge bubbles in the area, not only of credit derivatives and property, and in the global financial crisis, it went bang. When I was in Europe, uh, we were finding out that British, major British banks had been manipulating the interest rates to their own profit and the public detriment. No evidence that's happening in New Zealand. Uh, but the failure to properly regulate financial markets was to guarantee the public interest mm. was hot on the lips of people in Northern Europe. Now, it's a bit different here. I accept that we have some pretty well-managed uh, financial institutions here and we're not going to lay waste to them. But the government always needs to stand behind the public interest. Mm. And I think what we need is a new partnership between government and business to take a strategic view of how we develop our economy and bring together our research institutes, our regional development partners, and really go deep in areas where we can have sustainable competitive advantage. Mm. Uh, we're the best at the world at what we do or we don't play. Okay. Um, let, let's look at positioning labour. If, you, if mm -hmm. you were going to actually roll out some of these ideas that you developed here and be mm -hmm. influential in getting them into, mm -hmm. into policy, you're going to have to win the 2014 election, That's clearly. That's the plan. Mm -hmm. So what do you do here as a party? Do you take on the John Key-led national government with a leader-on-leader -leader presidential style, or do you have a cabinet-in-waiting approach where your whole team is kind of hitting the area where they are lined up to ex be experts in? Or do you embrace a, a red and green economic bloc, a Labour and Green Party economic bloc, and show that this is ready as a, as a part of the opposition, ready to take uh, the Treasury benches in 2014? Or D, all of the above. <laughs> all of the above. Um, look, I think we yeah. do and we are taking them on leader to leader. Yeah. And, uh, you know, John Key's been around a while, he knows a few tricks, but ultimately, he is very light on substance and very long on platitude. Uh, and he's made a story out of his life, which I don't think actually represents what he brings to the table, which so, is, uh, you know, time trading foreign exchange. This is not a poor hmm. boy build a business story. This is a bond trader running a country. So, so what's Labour's to answer on. to that? We secondly, as you've suggested, need to take them on team for team, spokesperson to spokesperson, policy to policy, and you might add electorate to electorate. Our whole team is working hard. We are going to run them hard up to the election. And thirdly, as you've, as you've also presaged, we need to look like a government in waiting. I think we do need to have a working partnership with our Green colleagues, and we need to look like we have a joined up set of answers for New Zealand. Do you think you're there yet? I think we're working well towards it, and I think we've got a way to go. David Cunliffe, thank you very much. Thank you, Selwyn. Selwyn Manning with Labour's Economic Development Spokesperson, David Cunliffe. Coming next, corrections or delusion? What's happening to seriously disturbed inmates in New Zealand's prisons?